What is the most heartbreaking statement a film teacher can hear from his student? Is it, I didn't do my paper? No, that's not it. Happens all the time. Doesn't even phase me anymore. What about this one? Oh man, I don't want to have to read subtitles. Nope, it's not that one either. The most heartbreaking, the most devastating statement a film teacher can ever hear is this one. I'll download the movie later and watch it on my phone. Welcome back to the 10 Second Film School. I'm Prof Linus. Thanks for tuning in. Films are not made for watching on the phone. You can watch them on your phone, but it doesn't mean that you should. Our relationship with the rectangular aspect ratio of a film screen, situated at a distance from the viewer's body, is not totally arbitrary. There are two important factors to recognize. Humans have stereoscopic vision, with eyes side to side on our heads. And through testing and experimenting, filmmakers found not only that human perception is exploited most efficiently in a horizontally oriented image, the measurable distance at which human beings see most optimally is oriented a distance from the viewer. Hence, normal vision, at least in the United States, is regarded as having 20-20 vision, being able to see something at 20 feet away. By the way, even when using metric units, the distance at which we measure good human vision is approximately the same. In Europe, for example, 2020 vision is called 6 6 vision, 6 meaning 6 meters. With the advent of smartphone technology, however, this is all changing. Not only is the preferred orientation of the images vertical when it comes to shared videos and the user interface on most apps, we are also forcing ourselves to watch movies at a distance much closer than filmmakers intend. If you watch a massive blockbuster film that was intended for the big screen on your phone, the experience is much different despite what you might think. So why has the aesthetic changed to vertical orientation for videos shared on social media? Could it be that beauty and form are subordinate concerns to convenience and purpose? Let's first discuss form following function. Architect Lewis Henry Sullivan coined the phrase, form ever follows function in 1896, which denoted his credo regarding how buildings should look according to three principal qualities that date back to Roman times. These qualities are structural integrity, utility, and beauty. His contention was that the way the building looks is dictated by what it's needed for, those needs being that it should be strong, useful, and beautiful. Designers and artists who understand the maxim form follows function might argue that other functional qualities have weight and permanence in art, not only visual media, but also in film and visual media tools. For example, when early filmmakers wanted to devise a way to distribute their short films, which at that time depicted short subject events and scenes, the kinetoscope was invented, which was a machine that was sized for human consumption. It was slightly shorter than the person, with a peephole at the top, wherein someone could pay to walk up to the device, look into it, and enjoy their film strip. In this way, the form, or the shape of the kinetoscope, is dictated by the need. First of all, it was strong enough to play currently existing films repeatedly. The object had a peephole that was calibrated and sized to interface with humans, and its boxed shape allowed the viewer to see an image that would be further more difficult to see without ambient light being shielded from it, and the machine itself also possessed a beauty that matched the Edwardian tastes that were still popular at the time. The vertical orientation of videos on TikTok or Snapchat or Instagram, which by the way is just the 16 by 9 image vertically, 9 by 16, is a shape that fits easily into a typical human hand. So for better or for worse, a new way of viewing has been invented by human beings. The good news is that 9x16 is our happy middle ground for folks who want to shoot the new way, and for folks who want to watch movies the old way. The implications of this relationship between form and function is massive. With film, the content and the devices on which we watch the content form a symbiotic relationship with each other. The way we see things, or the way we watch images, is also manipulated by the tools we are using to see them. So it might make sense that the types of stories, qualities of stories, and the narrative flow of these stories is changing what media is appropriate for either viewing environment, in this case, vertical or horizontal. Not only that, I would even say that our relationship with celebrities and celebrity culture is being shaped by our devices as a result of our desire to peer into the lives of these strangers more conveniently. Just as an indulgence, please take a look at this picture of a street advertisement for Humphrey Bogart's The Enforcer. 
I imagine this photograph was snapped sometime in 1951 when the movie was released. Before the advent of social media tools, the way we saw any celebrity's face was in a format that was larger than life, advertisements and film alike. Look how much larger Humphrey Bogart's head is compared to the head of the typical street viewer. Now think about the way we peer at celebrities on our computer screens and on our phones. In these cases, when we watch a trailer, or an ad, or a movie, the heads of the famous people are way smaller than our own heads oftentimes. And I wonder if this is relevant in some way. I might just do an essay on the psychological relationship between viewer and celebrity. How we see ourselves in the context of very famous people, how easily we think fame can be attained now, and the nature of the negative impact social media might have on our psychology when dreams that are seemingly easier to attain are further revealed to be unattainable. On a lighter note, one of the more delightful discoveries I've made in recent years is how much more I've enjoyed comedy because of social media. And it might be that comedy is more watchable on a phone because the orientation of a stand-up comedian's body in a standing position is vertical and fits neatly into the frame of a vertical window. If you like this lecture, be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit that thumbs up on essays you do like, so I have a sense of what videos my viewers are watching and what I should make more of. This is Prof Linus from the 10 Second Film School. I'll see you next time.